Hello viewers, welcome. In this video we'll be reviewing the HTC Bolt in more detail. As you remember in the previous video we unboxed and did an initial test. Now let's go over the features of the device which we got. So let's start by taking a look into settings. Let me scroll down to the bottom where we can get a little more information about our device. We have hardware version 4, so you know it's not the first version of the hardware that we got. It is a subsequent version, uh, or a few versions down. And this is the software version. And let's take a look at other features of this device. Let's look at the software information. Android 7.0, still Nougat. Uh, Android security patch level, September 1, 2017, very, very latest. This has a lot of the fixes for some of the vulnerabilities found in Android devices like Blueborn. Very important if you want an Android device to keep your security patched, and I'm glad HTC has done this for us. Now, what, o what other things that are important include amount of memory we have. So, just to give you a perspective, this is a 3 gigabyte device, of which... 1.6 gigabytes is fully used. Now, if the total capacity is 2.7 gigs, you only have 1.0 gigabytes free for your apps to run. So, just keep in mind that getting a 2 gigabyte device may not give you sufficient memory. Now, if we look at the apps using up the memory, Android OS takes 853 megabytes of memory, Google Play 122, there's an HTC process 115, and another Android system 102 megs, it basically tells you that the operating system uses already a large chunk of the memory. So when we look at the phone storage, we see that 10 gigabytes of storage is used out of 32 gigs, which still leaves us uh, pretty close to almost 22 gigabytes free. Now this is what we've done after we've upgraded to the latest security patches. We haven't installed anything, so what you see is just basically the uh, base system with the security patches applied to the device. With that, we got almost 22 gigs free for our storage, which is really good. All right, so n next, let's actually take a look at the performance of the device. As you know, this is really an octa-core processor, but it's really two quad cores. So you got a uh, high-performance quad core that could be running when you need the performance and you have a battery saving or lower performance set of quad cores depending on what the needs are to ensure that we make most efficient use of battery. So let's go into Chrome and let's try to open up say CNN's website for example and, and get a rough feeling for how, what is the performance. And as we know we're on Wi-Fi so it's the full network and the CPU bandwidth that's going to be constraining. So here you see that the page loads pretty quickly it scrolls. Now let's try desktop mode so you can get a better idea of the screen resolution that we have which is quad HD on this uh, display and page loads very quickly. Let me rotate around. Typical viewing on a uh, landscape view and you know it's very reasonably good quality and it scrolls pretty quickly. Now let's talk about the Qualcomm Snapdragon 810 processor that's running on this device. So we've actually played around with this device a little bit to try to get a feel for when heat builds up. For normal uses we found that like for email, for browsing and text messaging, uh, listening to music or watching YouTube videos for example, we did not notice any heat at all on the back side of the phone. However, when we're doing something CPU intensive, such as applying patches, we did notice that the phone temperatures uh, started rising a little higher than we felt before. But it's definitely not hot to the point where you cannot hold the phone comfortably in your hand. Now if we look at battery usage, we can see that in this example we have 18 hours of battery consumption on with this phone off the charger primary users of the battery are your apps Chrome and Google Play. There are a few system items for example cell standby, phone idle, Wi-Fi and in short what we experienced is that we've noticed a 10 to 11 percent uh, battery consumption when the phone is fully in idle mode and not in use. 
so over a 24 hour period so that's pretty good it retains battery pretty good if your your LTE is not turned on and for for us that means we don't have to constantly worry about running for a charger when you're not using the phone now when we're talking about sound quality we found that the speaker can be very loud uh, like most cell phones it does lack much bass so you don't get much bass but the phone can be very loud and that's great if you're on speakerphone mode this phone truly excels in screen resolution having a resolution that's quad HD and if you don't know what quad HD is it's 2560 by 1440 pixels very very nice resolution is very very sharp and very very impressed with the display next let's talk about the LED notifications so there are many cases when you need to know whether your phone is fully charged or is in the charging process or for example you got some kind of notification from some app and having that ability to see what's going on on the phone without actually touching the phone is it could be a very convenient thing to have for a status notification it comes with a nice blinking LED that blinks green to notify you that you have some kind of notification from an app. And likewise, when you're charging, which, which is typical for most phones, you get a red LED that's lit until the charging is fully complete. And when the charging is fully complete, you also get a change in the LED to green. And this tells you that your phone is fully charged and ready for use. Next, let's look at the camera. Here we have a picture taken both by the HTC Bolt and a, a typical smartphone like the Samsung Galaxy S3. And we can see that there's no flash on the S3, you see virtually nothing. And on the HTC Bolt with virtually no light at all, it was able to grab a, uh, some imagery in the picture. Now with flash, they both look fine. So uh, it really shows that the camera in the HTC Bolt is more sensitive than those of earlier phones or common budget phones. Next, let's actually do a summary. So I want to go over all the features of the HTC Bolt and how we feel about the pros and cons. So the price is 145, really good price, very competitive. Uh, There's a current price on the Sprint store. It runs an Android 7.0 Nougat, which is one of the latest OS's. The latest is now Oreo, but Nougat is still not far from the latest. It has a quad HD display. This is very high resolution, 2560 by 1440 pixels, and the viewing angle is pretty good uh, on the display. Now there have been other reviews of this phone and other phones too, and very few reviewers ever focus on security of the device. So one of the great things that HTC is doing here is providing the latest Android security bulletin patches, at least the September 2017 patches for uh, the device to make sure that it is secure. And one of this is very important because one of the things that you don't want to have is a phone that's insecure. It can get hacked when you go to a conference or uh, wherever you are you never know if you can, your phone can be hacked and malware installed so it's great to have the latest patches now in addition what we really like is the good size memory three gigabytes now we shown you that uh, over almost two gigabytes is used up earlier in the video so having three gigs will give you an extra gig of memory to use for your apps with 32 gigs of storage, you have about 20 gigs free to, for all your apps and data. Now, what we liked about the camera we've already talked about is it has good low light support. So if you're taking pictures in dark places, it is more sensitive than other similar priced smartphones on the market. And the fingerprint sensor is very convenient to have to quickly unlock your phone when you need to access it. We like the speaker because of its loudness, but we do note that, like most smartphones, it doesn't have much bass. Now, unlike budget smartphones, this phone actually has a dedicated LED that not only shows charging status, but also notifications. So we really like that too. As for misses, the only real negative we experienced when using this phone was the occasional instances when we had heat on the back side of the phone. Th this could occur because of high CPU consumption. Now, while we worked with the phone for web browsing, for uh, music, and watching videos on YouTube, and, and texting, and email, we actually did not experience any issues with heat on the phone at all. But we understand that heat could be a problem if you're playing super CPU intensive games, for example. So this would be good to keep in mind if you wanted to purchase this phone. 
In summary, you do get very many high-end features found in more expensive phones with the only drawback of heat. So hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If so, please tap the thumbs up. We'll be having more great videos to come. Please subscribe so you don't miss out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.